This is Till There Was You from the Meet the Beatles album, which is the Beatles covering a classic show tune, actually written by uh, Meredith Wilson. And they do a great job on this. So uh, I'm just going to do the performance video at first as usual, and then I'll walk you right through uh, all the chords, uh, George's fills, and his uh, exceptional guitar solo, which is totally his. That's the totally original part of the song is George's... Uh, very cool guitar solo, so here we go. There were bells on a hill, but I never heard them ringing. No, I never heard them at all till there was you. sky, but I never saw them winging, no I never saw them at all, till there was you, then there was music, and wonderful roses, they tell me, in sweet fragrant meadows of dawn. love all around, but I never heard it singing, no I never heard it at all, till there was you. got lots of chords in this one right uh, lots of bar chords we've got diminished chords augmented chords and uh, just a lot of cool stuff you know and if you're serious about your guitar playing and getting your chord work together and you like this type of tune this is really a cool one to learn how to play okay it really gets that together for you so right off the bat we've got an F major bar chord and then we've got a D sharp diminished or E flat diminished, whichever you prefer. And then a G minor bar chord. And then a C9. And on that ninth chord, you might normally play it like that with just the uh, five middle strings. But what I'm doing is I'm catching the bottom E string with my pinky and getting that full bar in there, which you can really hear Lennon play on the recording. So for the intro, we have and the strumming on that is basically just some down strokes, right? Uh, but you want to keep your hand flowing kind of nice and loose. And then we're into the first verse of the song, and the chords are basically the same except the C9 is replaced by a B flat minor. And you sit on the chords twice as long. So we've got the F again, the uh, D sharp or E flat diminished, G minor bar chord, and then B flat minor bar chord. And the strumming on that is basically you can think of it as down, down, up, up, down. And then we head back. 
back to the F chord. Two down strokes. So we have. So what's happening there after the F chord is I'm moving up to an A minor bar chord. Okay. And what you want to do here, it's a very staccato uh, after you do the down stroke. Like so. And really on the recording, I don't think Lennon really swings all the way down to the bottom string, maybe to the uh, B string. But it doesn't matter either way. It just sounds cool, right? So it's down, sort of striking more the bass notes of the chord, first two or three strings, and then swinging with an upstroke to catch the bottom two or three strings, or, you know, B string and G string. And you walk the chord, same shape, all the way down to G minor. But you want to pop the chord. Let the pressure off, pressure off, until you land the G minor. And then pretty much two down strokes on the G minor as well. C add nine. So after that C add nine, the turnaround chords are F major, G minor, and C add nine again. So let me play through that whole uh, section from the F. See the strumming on that turnaround again is down, down, up, up, down, 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 down. So let me play through all of that right through the uh, turnaround as well. practice right just really cool to help you to get all of that together so we're going to repeat all of that again right uh, but Lennon does a couple of cool things off of the uh, diminished chord uh, the second time around you'll hear him move that diminished chord up to what is technically F sharp diminished I won't go into a technical explanation of what's going on here but when we talk about moving these chords and he's going to move them again they are literally all the same chord. They're just different inversions of the same chord. They contain the same four notes, D sharp, A, C, and F sharp, just in a different inversion, F sharp, C, D sharp, A. So just a note on that. Okay, so the second time through the song, he moves it up to the fourth fret after he hits the initial chord. <laughs> So what he does is he hits the diminished chord and moves it up to F sharp. I think two down strokes is good for that. see the second time around we don't play that turnaround that originally went they're going to move into the bridge of the song so uh, the progression sits on F and then F9 and play that exactly as you played the C9 kind of uh, catching the first two strings with your pinky barring across them if you can if not it's fine like that as well And that takes us into the bridge or the B section of the song. So this part starts off with a B flat major chord, and then it moves to a B flat minor, just pulling the uh, second finger off. Down to F, and then we're gonna move to a D9. Again, all these ninth chords are 
played the same way. And again, the strumming is down, down, up, up, down. And then we move to a G minor triad, which is played like so, barring across the first three strings. And uh, we're dropping this note to the fourth fret, but maintain that bar with your fingers. I kind of bar across all four strings. I think that's easiest. Down, down, up, down, down, up, G dominant seventh with the full strum. Down, down, up, up, down. C7, regular C7 this time. And a full strum on that as well. G sharp augmented. Six, five, five, four, and that's a full strum as well. So that is the song in a nutshell. So before we talk about George's uh, really cool solo and some of the fills he plays, let's talk about what happens after the solo. So when George finishes his solo, we move to the uh, B section of the song again, where it was B flat major, B flat minor, F, D9, that whole section. So after his solo, we head back to this. you can see that I dragged that diminished chord from the first fret to the fourth fret to the seventh fret. He actually, at some points in the song, even drags it all the way up to the tenth fret. So let me do that real slow. So you can drag it to the second fret, or excuse me, to the fourth fret. You can drag it to the fourth fret, then the seventh, or you can even drag it from uh, the second fret to the fourth, to the seventh, to the tenth. So when we get to the end of that last verse in the song, you can see that I was just sitting on the F chord again, okay? So from this part... Twice. So we sit on the F chord for twice as long. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. C... E7, back to C, and the strumming and the timing on that is down, down, up, move to the E7, down, down, up, and then a full strum on the C chord, down, down, up, up, down. A quick note on that E7, you'll notice that you're not playing the top E string on that, you're trying to create a... Uh, Back to F, C sharp 7 or D flat 7 if you like. Be sure to stay off of the uh, sixth string and the first string. Back to F. And we ended on an F major 7th chord. So let me uh, play through that whole last verse just to make sure that uh, everything is clear.
So right off the top, over the opening chords, George plays this. And that's easy enough. You can just see it on the tab. I'll just walk you through each of these uh, uh, fills, if you want to call them that, individually, okay? Then McCartney comes in uh, with the vocal, and uh, George plays this. And what you'll have to do is listen to the recording to hear exactly where he places it. It's not difficult, uh, but he kind of has a cool little uh, emphasis on some of the phrasing and the way he puts it in there. But again, after the vocal enters, and then he leaves a lot of space, which is really cool. He just lets the vocal kind of float along. And then when there's another little space in the vocal, you'll hear him play this. And then McCartney comes in with the next line, uh, the same melody, and George plays the exact same thing. But this time, in the same space that's left in the vocal as before, he plays something a little bit differently. And that's a little bit harder to hear on the recording. Not impossible to hear, but it's just a little bit quieter. But that is the next fill that you'll hear from him. And then he just lays out through the whole uh, B section, right? So the next fill that you'll hear will be on the next verse. And that's the last fill that you hear before he enters the solo. Now what happens is after the solo, it goes back to the B section again, where he totally lays out. And then we enter the next verse and you'll hear those exact same fills again. And again, I trust you can just sort of listen to the original recording to tell exactly where he's putting those, but it's, it's pretty simple. And then you'll hear this kind of quiet, subdued little fill. And it's right after McCartney sings the word singing. <laughs> That's what you'll hear, just the simple two notes. But really cool and very effective. And then at the very end of the song, the outro, when the rhythm guitar is playing. George plays this. Ending on an F major 7th once again. So there you go with all the fills that George plays throughout the song. So uh, let's get into the solo. I really like this solo. I think it's really uh, unique and special in the Beatles' early catalog, and it certainly shows that George was a, uh, a big fan of different styles of guitar playing. It's got a definite jazz flavor to it, and he plays some really nice lines. sweet indeed. So let's just uh, break that down bit by bit with the tab on the screen, of course. I would call that the first line. Then change position slightly. Again, nice and slow. Again, alternate picking in the right hand. And then we come down here at the third fret and we bar across the first three strings for a tidy little G minor chord and we play this. So the uh, ring finger and the pinky are coming off and on at the 5th fret on the G string and the E string. So you want to make sure your bar is good and solid. Slide that up to the 6th fret for a B minor. And you can see that is the exact same thing. You can also play it like that if you like. It doesn't matter either way. I just play it that way because it's most comfortable for me. 
And then there is a one beat rest and George sweeps across an F6 chord. So you're just barring all the way across the D, G, B, and E strings at the 10th fret, and then catching the F note with your first finger at the 8th fret on the A string. Just sweep across the chord, release it, you know, just let the pressure off so it's nice and staccato, and you're there. And then where Lennon is playing the rhythm part, George simply plays the same chords, an A minor chord, A flat minor, all the way down to G minor. And uh, he's just playing a different inversion of them. And it's a pretty easy shape, as you can see. And he plays this. So you're bouncing off of the D string, swinging up and grabbing the first three strings, or all of them if you like. And again, popping that chord just like Lennon does on the rhythm part to make it nice and uh, staccato. And then George lands a G flat 7 sharp 9, which can be kind of a tricky chord to land if you're not used to it, and uh, or F sharp if you prefer. Uh, but you'll hear him hit the bass note of the chord first on the recording. It sounds like he kind of skips the A string and then sweeps the rest of the chord. So you're barring once again using your pinky. And then we play an F major triad and just walk through the chord. After you sweep the chord, B, G, D, and then he closes it out with this line. Pretty sweet. So let me play that nice and slow so you can see the fingering that I'm using. And you can play that with down strokes. I think it helps it to pop out a little bit more, kind of closing out the solo. So there you have it, George's uh, fabulous solo from uh, Till There Was You. Another great tune, another great delivery of a great tune from the Beatles. Take care.